discuss the connection between life and acting. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mornings with Matt the Deering Acting Studio Podcast. All right, so uh, so dark to light here. Um, I we didn't know. We, we, okay, we've got a guest in the studio. We should just start there. I mean, um, ladies and gentlemen of the mornings with Matt during acting studio podcast, please give a big warm welcome to Miss Janae Dunn. Hey, <laughs> that's my favorite part. <laughs> the beautiful singer, songwriter, actress. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So as I was going to say, dark to light here, um, I was in like engulfed in, I, I had everything set up. I was right, right about to do my morning goals um, for the month. And then Brian was like, hey, guest is in studio today. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was running around like a madman cleaning up and and it looks pretty nice in here doesn't it it does like you'd, <laughs> you'd never know <laughs> no, you wouldn't. so how it? are you janae i'm good how are you uh, happy I, to be you alive guys, hopefully you got good sleep after the weekend yeah you were on that 24-hour podcast quite a bit huh only for compared to you guys you guys were up 24 hours i was there for like <laughs> 20 minutes so big difference <laughs> Well, you sang though too, and it was very beautiful. So thank, thank you. you for doing that. Thanks for having me. It's really cool what you guys are doing with that. So. Thank you. Yeah, we're so our our goal here, including this show, is to spread light driven content to the planet, and that that that's a big um a big vision actually, because it includes movies, it includes um, God centered TV shows and and shows like this, and so. Um, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. What we're what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. awesome. So, um, so t so tell us about you, um, and and your first album. Um, well, it came out a year, a little over a year ago now. Um, last February, well, yeah, a year from February, and oh, should I get closer? Yeah, to oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What is that stuff called? S S M R. Oh yeah. Is that, is that it? S M R. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But like, uh, uh, like you're, you're gonna you're gonna open like a wrapper and it's water. like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I, yeah, I mean, I just I I had written a bunch of songs and I love songwriting. I that's the first thing about music that just has always um, spoken to me is I feel like my I feel understood. I've mm. always, always music, I would feel misunderstood and then I would listen to song and I'm just like, yes, that's, it. that's, this person understands me or this, this song, I understand myself. I would learn about myself through music. So lyrics, um, I've always been writing. And so I just wrote a bunch of songs and I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to release an album. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It was a huge fear. And, um, at the point in my life when I did it, I just kind of wanted to start facing down my fears and stop running from them. And, um, I never was confident in myself as a singer and a songwriter, so it was just kind of a way to kind of challenge myself um, and kind of trust the uh, passions and stuff that God has given me. And um, yeah, and so it just, it was really fun. I got to co-produce. There's a couple songs on there, a few songs on there that were co-written and collaborations, and then the production process was a big collaboration. Um, a really talented uh, audio engineer here in Gilbert, um, did it and yeah, it was just a really cool experience and I, I'm, I'm almost done with my second in terms of piecing together my second album and then I'll be going into the process of, I'm going to work with a new, um, audio engineer this time. Uh, so I'm kind of, I have a couple people I'm looking at and a few more that I'm going to reach out to and just kind of see where, where it goes. But yeah. That's amazing. So, um, how young were you when you first started singing? Um, my whole life. Uh, my mom actually has she she would write down memories or like little things that i'd say or words that i would say and she has a memory i would go out and sing to the stars twinkle twinkle little star when i was like two or three um i made up my own song i guess in the car seat of the our minivan at the time and i was like two or three and i was like oh baby baby or something <laughs> i don't know something really dumb but so you invented yeah. the britney spears song apparently oh yeah oh baby baby <laughs> <laughs> she heard you in the back seat of your mom's car stole the lyrics 
That's right. And From this little three year old. <laughs> <laughs> So that's really cool. So, so did you end up? Was it because of COVID? You think that that started the the second album? Like, like, wh- wh- did you have a stop point where you're like, oh, I, I better like double down on this idea, or did that already start before that? It already started before it, um, but a lot of I kind of knew the concept. It all kind of I knew I wanted to work on something, but I was just kind of I didn't really know where I. I wanted it to go because I really like concept albums or like having them be kind of a part of a theme or maybe that chapter. Um, And it kind of bloomed over time and based off of a song called Bloom, and that's actually going to be the title of the album is Bloom. Um, And it's just, it kind of hit probably over COVID where I realized for sure that was going to be the title of the album. And then that was going to be kind of what the, the album is just going to kind of close this chapter in my life um, and then kind of pave the way for what what's to come, you know, and I'm about to, I'm going to be 26 this month and um, just really, I feel, I feel like God's been really, I'm in a season right now through COVID. It's been um, a pruning season or like a refining season and Mm. maturing season. I've been really diving into my walk with him and learning more um, about Jesus and, and becoming more bold in my faith and kind of just, I feel like he's prepping me for something, but I don't know what, but I just, I'm learning to kind of, COVID has definitely learned, uh, taught me to take it step at a time, life step at a time and staying in the moment and not really, you can have all these plans, you can um, worry about, you know, next month, but on the drop of a hat, everything changes. I mean, look at now we're going on seven months of this whole crazy, Right, our world's just been flipped. Um, so we just have to live in the moment, but yeah. So let me ask you then, um, <clears throat> did you have any, like, w- w- did you have anything in line or stacked up or, or were you doing anything that, that COVID just like stopped that immediately and you had to change course? Yeah. I mean, I was, I had actually just come out of another, of the end of, um, some health stuff, not like serious health stuff, but some health stuff. And that was ongoing for a couple months. And then, um, finally got kind of back into the swing of things. And I had started to book some gigs and then I had to cancel everything. And, um, but yeah, so just kind of, it definitely, it's weird though. I've been feeling like the world, my life has just been going too fast for me. And I'm like, I just need everything to slow down. I just need to breathe. And then all of a sudden, like Hmm. I was forced into that and, so it was kind of a blessing in disguise personally for me. Um, but Were there any difficult moments? Like, did you, oh, yeah. did you run into any sadness and depression when like through it? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, it actually has hit me late in the beginning. It was like, cause that's what I needed. I was like, cool. Like yeah. not cool, but like it was scary. I definitely went through in the beginning. I was like just trying to process everything and understand and see kind of where I stood on all of it because Um, I always kind of let other people and their opinions and things affect me and not always stay true to what and tap into what I personally feel. So I kind of found my ground on it all. And then, um, I was, I definitely am a person that gets, uh, I like control over my life and I like to know things and know what's coming. And so being in such an unknown and shaky ground, I was like, at that point I was like, you know what, I have nothing else but to just kind of really lean in and press in into God and into my faith right now because that's my only lifeline or that's my only, you know, rope of hope for the moment. And, um, but yeah, it's recently though, it's kind of hit me a little heavier because I'm getting impatient. I'm like, okay, I want, I want things to, I want things to change. So it's, I think it's for me, it's, I've been a late bloomer on the, on that. But yeah, I mean, it gets lonely. I mean, I'm a very social person and I thrive off of face-to-face interaction. Like my job right now, um, I'm a fitness and, uh, fitness and goal coach and, um, we're doing a lot of virtual coaching and I just want to be able to be face-to-face with them and help them with their issues. Cause otherwise I'm like messaging back and forth and I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Um, and then I don't hate it, but you know, like I hate the, I hate the lack of connection. Right. Right. 
Uh, and do you have do you sometimes have a lot of clients stacked up right next to each other? Mm -hmm. So you're just sitting in front of a computer for a while. And I, and get, it's like, I get anxiety and yeah. I'm a procrastinator. So I'm like, ah, I totally get that. that numbers I, building up. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I, I hadn't, um, you know, we are we were always um, we were lucky because we had virtual training as a part of our future. So this was something that we were planning on doing that we had been ready to do mm -hmm. and we had been preparing for for probably two years but didn't realize that this was going to happen and we had to like use it right away um and and what's interesting though is is what i thought was and it would have been what, something that was novel that was really cool and different and new and unique and now it's like a everyone does it and b everyone can't wait to stop doing it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so and I, and i can tell you too as a teacher I've sat there and I've, I've taught, um, sometimes four or five hours straight, you know, on a computer and, and going through whether it be corporations and then kids classes, teens, adults. And by the end of it, man, and I, and I love what I do. I'm exhausted, like really tired, a, a different kind of tired, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I get tired from an in-person class, but, but the, the virtual is like, it feels like you, it almost, it requires like more energy, more energy. almost, you know? Yeah. I would agree with that. Well, yeah. then there's the stare at the screen factor as well. Like, right. I mean, yes. like your eyes are like right on this thing and the light's just coming up at you. I mean, it's just, it definitely, at least for me, when I'm teaching, say, like, the, I'm like done and I'm like this, like, hey, you your know. Your locks up. And yeah. Like, <laughs> or do you, do either of you guys wear contacts or anything? I, I wear reading glasses, okay. like the lowest prescription, but my yeah. My contacts will start, I have dry eyes too, but it'll start, you'll have like double vision and you have to like. Yeah readjust your eyes and refocus and it never works <laughs> so so speaking of brian teaching this is how you uh came to the studio right he was teaching an emotional triggers class yeah it was 2012 i believe 12 sounds 11. about right 12 11, 11, 11 or 12, 12. Yeah. yeah so and like this is pre me losing my fingers even <laughs> I think. it was a long time ago <laughs> i was a either i yeah i was a junior in high school yeah so it was uh 2012 were you um, in the were you in the teens class or the adults class? I think I was in it was it was it was definitely mixed. There was like some we were young adults and then some on the older end. Okay. And um yeah, I I forget how I it was word of mouth I heard about during acting studio from someone and then um I just was drawn to that because at that point I was very in my point in acting and in just in myself I was very afraid of being vulnerable mm -hmm. um so I was like I but I wanted to be because I knew it would help my my craft so yeah and then he was a great teacher yeah it was fun and yeah. he and he's gotten even better thanks which is great <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I literally like when I read that on the sheet I was like what yeah. like I had to like really think back for yeah. a second and I was like this is so crazy mm -hmm. you know um, and so it's so cool. Just so cool. Cause I, I mean, more recently, obviously it's all the castings mm -hmm. and like seeing you through all that and just checking out all the things you're doing with your music. And, um, and then I like the fact that when I say, remember that it was the emotional triggers class that I was like, Oh my gosh, like I'm, I, I missed that class. It's crazy. It was a good class. I remember I had to do a scene from um, a walk to remember. Yeah. Brian's favorite movie of all time. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> it is. Not gonna lie. Um, and then we had to do the eulogy and we did a little bit of Meisner. Um, and yeah. And then we reconnected a couple years ago at one of my first castings. You were, you were the one behind the camera filming us. And I was like, Hey, we, I think we, I think we both were just kind of like, Hey, I know you. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. It's a small world. It's cool. How I love how life comes together like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty Brian's incredible. really good at those. Hey, I know you moments. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, yeah. Best. I'm like the best. Hey, 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 I know you. <laughs> hey, you. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. We love when students reach back out because, um, you know, over, over the, over a decade we've been doing this, you know, there's been thousands and thousands of people that have kind of filtered through and, mm -hmm. You don't, you, it's hard to remember everybody's oh, yeah. name and, and, uh, you'll see a face and you're like, I think I, I know you, yeah, right? <laughs> but I'm not sure if you're like famous, a barista or a student, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just someone I saw one time. <laughs> right. 
I, I think I think I saw Are you on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, not no. like on the bus on the on the photo on the bus. Right, like, right. <laughs> like you were the advertisement. <laughs> um, all right, good. So t- so talk to us about the, uh, the 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 big song, the 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 one that sort of uh, sparked the album. Bloom. Yeah. Um, that actually, so I wrote it. Two thousand like summer of two thousand nineteen. Um, I was at the time I was maybe it was 2018. I don't know, to be honest, I can't remember, but I was still, uh, instructing at a, I, before where I'm at now, um, I was a kickbox instructor at a place in Gilbert and I would work the mornings like eight hour shifts in the morning. And it was like five in the morning and I'm cleaning off the bags and I started humming this melody and, um, that fall that weekend prior I was at a service at my church I go to Cornerstone in Chandler and um it was just about this kind of walking through the wilderness and the pastor he like did this um sermon and had like a backpack and um talking about these these wilderness seasons and like your different seasons in life and um trusting that that dry season is going to you know turn into something good and something productive and there's a reason for it and um I don't really know I just started kind of humming like blue and I just start I don't know and then I just started like singing stuff and sometimes like when I I'll get lyrics and a melody all together without having to like sit down and write and that's just kind of how it happened I was I was like ooh, ooh, because it one thing kind of led to <laughs> another and then it like I was vibing with it and so I grabbed my phone and I started recording it and then that later that week like it, you know over time when I had free time I fleshed it out but yeah that that's like the first thing that kind of started. That's really cool. You, you know, when I hum, it doesn't sound like that. No. Yeah, it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> 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 da, 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 da. And I'm like, nah, it's not a song. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it still sounds. It sounds yeah, better yeah, still. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't think you can make yourself sound bad. I don't think it's possible. Like, no. let's try. It. Let's, let's see. see. Okay, right. can Janae make herself sound bad? Here we go. Um, give me a song. Give me a song. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I mean, that's like it's, very still, intentional. It's like abstractly yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's still in there. Actually, I just my friend just had a birthday um, and she lives in California and I called her and left her a voicemail with, I always sing badly on the voicemails because... You know, but you don't. But fun. you don't do well singing badly. Probably. I do. Happy okay, birthday. Okay, that's that's like a. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a, a Happy mind twist. Happy birthday to you. Hey, that was Dude, pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, I don't think. Find a different note. All right, so do me a favor. Can you sing the beginning of Happy Birthday to the best of your ability? Okay. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brian, Matt, and Joey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna Happy bring you on. Too. We're gonna bring you on for the birthday of our of our show. That would be a really yeah, good yeah, hundred percent for the year anniversary. <laughs> that would be amazing. So here's a little casting tip for everybody: if you have singing on your resume, no happy birthday. Mm. Know how to yeah. sing it well, and and the reason I say that is because this is what I use as a casting director, as a, as a can you sing or not sing? Because mm. because sometimes people have singing on their resume and they're like, yeah, I sing, but maybe they've got one song, mm. and I'm going, okay, can you carry a tune? I'm curious because when I sing Happy Birthday, it doesn't sound good, even when I try my very best, <laughs> it doesn't sound good. But I'm not trained and I didn't work at it, and um, you know, it's not it's not something that I do necessarily. Um, but but oftentimes in the casting room, people will be like, oh, um, you know, I don't, I don't. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, if you if you're not willing to go for happy birthday, maybe that shouldn't be on your resume. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, learn happy birthday, point. learn it well and have that be um, a go to song that you can always sing. Yeah. And, and it, the other reason is everyone knows the words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then it can be a, like a levelizer, too. Mm-hmm. So I can have you know, 10 people sing happy birthday and I can go, okay, I can compare their voices across the board here mm-hmm. and, and, and their creativity and whatnot. Well, and just think when you're 
singing happy birthday and a whole in unison you can tell who like there's all these different yeah. pitches and notes <laughs> right. going on and you're like wait where's even as a singer i'm like wait okay where's my note i gotta <laughs> i gotta find it <laughs> matt and i have this thing where because matt actually does have a good voice like he said it's just not very trained right brian has to um, sing in my ear so yeah it's this <laughs> it's, it's hilarious because if i'll stand uh, I, is it left or right ear i can't remember i don't but, know bro it's it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird incredible thing but straight up if i sing right now next to him into his ear he can match it and like sound awesome there it's so go. so funny like, i think i think your voice too. just just drowns mine out brian i'm pretty sure that that's <laughs> i think what it no, is. i think i'm a blender i think that's you're what a blender it is. Yeah, yeah i can i can find where you are and match it and right make it right sound good. so you're you're like you're like a human auto-tune <laughs> <laughs> no so one time we were uh, at matt's house and i was outside uh throwing the ball with the kids oh yeah and we were watching the football game, and this was last season. And I walked in, and <laughs> Brian is just like singing in Matt's ear. And, <laughs> and they're singing together, but Matt doesn't sing. And they were singing Amazing Grace of all songs. And I was like, did somebody die while I was outside? <laughs> like, like, why are you, what are you what doing? What is happening? <laughs> why, why would you be doing this? He yeah, was just singing a so piece of weird. hope. He needed some hope and, you know. Grace. <laughs> yeah, it was. It thank you. Rocked thank you. my world. Yeah. That's we do have sure. a button for that, but you know. <laughs> what's the What's the button? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna get it wrong. Oh, it was off. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll just imagine it. Use your imagination. <laughs> it's part of acting. Hey, Brian. So, so really quick, let's talk about this. Um, because I'm I'm gonna try to find a video here. Right, really quick. Um, talk about this idea of the eulogy, because I think that's a really cool concept. And Janae went through that with you in class. Mm-hmm. Just like the the power, both in personal development and in acting, and in tying, um, you know, to some sort of an end, and you realize that like life isn't necessarily about what you've been making it about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So originally, uh, I can't remember what the book was, but I was doing doing like a lot of different research on emotion and stuff, and it was through. Uh, I believe through God because it was a personal development one that I was reading at the time and it was talking about this eulogy exercise and basically it was meant for personal development in that way like mm -hmm. go ahead and take time to write out right now if you died tomorrow what would your eulogy look like mm -hmm. but the cool part about the exercise and what I was able to expand upon was it wasn't just your eulogy like you just writing it right now it got you to start thinking about all the things that you've accomplished so far what you want to accomplish, but then also go deep into what do you hope that people would say about you right now in your life? Like, what, who do you want to be? Um, and so the main exercise, actually, you write one for yourself first, but then you have to write it from the point of view of the people around you. So you'd have to write it from somebody at work. You'd have to write it from somebody in your family, and you had to write it from somebody uh, who's a friend. So basically, then you have to really think about okay, the people around me, how do I think that they see me right now? And the hope was, am I, am I reflecting that right now? And if not, what do I need to change in my life to, to make that happen? And the other hope was also to realize our own mortality, uh, to realize that, that yes, like we are on a time clock, everybody, and you don't know when that time ends. So hopefully in, inspire a bit of a fire for everyone to get really excited about their stuff and dive deep into it and, and not make excuses about like, oh, I have all this time to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really powerful, really powerful. Uh, and in one of the classes, we even had them read uh, the eulogy of another person. So like I would grab hers and read it for her, not in her class, I don't think. I think it was a different one, yeah, but sure. um, I just kept expanding that. So it was, it was such a cool thing to just let people like really dive into them, you know? You know, what would be interesting would be to write a eulogy for yourself from your enemy's perspective. Well, Ooh. you know, we did. Did we? I was okay. about to say we had to. And at that time, I had lost a friend. Um, she just kind of just randomly poof, kind of just dropped me. Hmm. And I it really like affected me. And I I wrote it from her perspective because we had I had to write it from my parents. Um, my I think we had to do three. It was actually it was from my my own perspective my best friend and then yeah and then i wrote it from from that girl and mm. then it, it was yeah it was it was intense I actually I, I kept them too like i found them recently um when i was organizing because i like to keep some i like to keep certain things because it's just nice to go back and reflect and see 
oh, wow, look at, you know, yeah, how you've grown sure. or, or, oh, I remember that good memory. And, but yeah, I kept them and I have them and I've, and it's, it was hard to read kind of, um, hmm. emotional, but yeah, I remember, I think we had to read our own or I think, and my class that I did with you, I think I read, we read one, we read our own that we wrote, but it was from that other person's perspective. One of the other ones so from, it was, yeah. yeah, but it wasn't the one that we wrote from our perspective, but yeah, it was a really cool exercise. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Cause think about it. If it's from your enemy's perspective or somebody who, who, who you think doesn't like you right now, you could actually figure out all the reasons why and maybe mm. even fix some stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, even if you couldn't mend the relationship, you could go, you can really see things from their perspective in a positive way mm-hmm. and maybe make some life adjustments, which is, which is pretty cool. hundred percent. Yeah. It's kind of like that, um, that debate exercise that you do, right? Where, um, if you're super passionate, I remember, I'll never forget this one. Um, you basically have two topics, right? And you're going back and forth and you have to debate your side. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's in like an improv style format. Uh, but the twist that Matt added was that you would, you would have to defend the opposite side. So like, obviously I, like if you know me and my stuff, I'm a big Christian. So one time we were doing it, Matt's like, Hey, you have to argue for atheism. And I was like, Oh man, <laughs> like this is so hard. But what it does is it really, like you said, it gets you to look at the other side. And, and then he taught that after that, then if, when you go to talk about your point, you'll have a deeper mm-hmm. understanding of the other person's. And if you're going into to even the possibility of leading someone a certain way, you'll be able to see it from their side. So you're not like attacky, but more like curious, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes me think of um, you're having, uh, it teaches you to have empathy and compassion for everyone, which I mean, our world, I feel like our world needs a lot of right now. Um, I just did a virtual um mission uh last weekend and what is a virtual missions trip this is this interesting concept to me so we were just zooming with people in africa okay um this organization called orchard africa um and they are it's a incredible this couple moved out there and it's it all this whole nonprofit organization of basically helping them um providing food and agriculture care education and um housing and, and, and homes for orphans because they are fighting a huge HIV pandemic mm. um, and hunger. They Their homes are stacked on top of each other, stacked high. They don't have places for farming and they their food source relies on farming. So they've, um, these this couple, um, Michelle and Mike Tessendorf, um, they, it, they've moved out there. This was like 20 years ago. They found these kids at a dumpster and decided they just had it on their hearts to make food and bring it over to them one day at the dumpster and feed these children. And then the children just started accumulating and coming to them. And then they're like, well, we shouldn't be feeding them at a dumpster. So they moved it over to this tree and that's kind of where the tree idea and orchard kind of developed. But over time that just now they're, they're equipping and educating and, and helping and um, sharing the gospel, you know, to people out there and helping them then kind of like the training wheels and then they let them take off the training wheels and and take control of their own community and and spread um just build them up and and help them have a chance to have um because it's it's they're they're in such poverty it's like we think we have poor out here it's like it's a whole you know whole other level yeah, uh, you know, my wife was just telling me a story this last weekend. A friend of hers, um, <clears throat> her her husband works uh, in some high up government stuff that I, I couldn't really talk about. But um, but that but they're over there in in a, a small town and um, protected because of his job. But but she said that the COVID pandemic out there was so different than here. I mean, people literally mm-hmm. starving to death on the streets and just dying like kind of everywhere and and she was talking about the kids and and and, you know this broke our hearts they they adopted a child out there and um you know they 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 knew which one they wanted and and you know they kind of they went to the the place they were going to be doing this from and anyway when they when they would walk in the kids would just run to them all the kids and they would all say mommy daddy mommy daddy mommy daddy and these are like two years old three Mm -hmm. years old these kids so basically they already knew 
somebody was going to get chosen and they were mm. trying to be they were trying to make this couple their their mom and dad you know what i mean they were like fighting each other for the opportunity and so this one child you know got picked the chosen one is going to be now back here in the states and living a totally different life and and it's it's like strange to think about the like the huge impact that we can have and mm -hmm. and how world hunger is a really a big deal still yeah um well and what i was going to say uh the from the point of bringing that up um, was compassion. And, and in one of our daily devotionals, you know, every day we had like a, something to kind of go through and it talked about compassion and compassion, literally the definition of compassion means to suffer with. And so going back to like the eulogy and things like that and writing from your enemy's perspective or from an, just another person's perspective. Um, and that's something I've, loved about acting that has helped me in my life is just learning to put yourself in other person's shoes and and try and understand their thinking knowing you're not going to experience you haven't experienced what they've experienced and you don't you're not them but you can you can level with them and suffer with them and feel put yourself in their shoes and you know like you said change your perspective and see from their side and um that's kind of one of the big things the big themes that kind of tied through that mission was just um, what can you do and taking yourself out of your own your own needs and your own life and and you know as us living in and like I live in Gilbert I'm you know one of the most just kind of you're in your world and just really pulling you from your your own world and placing you and really opening your eyes and all of your senses your hands your feet your mind your heart to other people and um trying to understand them and what can then uh, after you understand and you see them truly see them then what can you do you sure. know no that's really but, cool and and i'm sure um virtual missions trips probably weren't a thing before right and yeah no i mean you would go physically right, right. and i mean obviously going physically it's, it's still awesome and i'm sure people would prefer that and and whatnot but having said that this this could open up a whole new world mm -hmm. for doing missions because because even if I think about the classes and you, you you classes and you're saying oh they're not they're not quite the same we are helping people mm -hmm. at a really mm -hmm. high level and so being able to do that now yeah. worldwide and do it, it it's it's definitely easier and we could be teaching English we could be teaching religion I mean mm -hmm. we can be we can be impacting other people across the seas without having to fly over there mm -hmm. or even after we get back or something you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, and looking into even, I mean, just the scheduling factor in and of itself, like how many people I know, myself included, I've done this multiple times, have been like, oh, yeah, I would love to go on a mission trip, but I just can't. Mm -hmm. Like, I, yeah, I can't leave for this amount of time and do this. And, and this just opens up the floodgates to sort of allow those who, who could not be able to or wouldn't have the means to even mm -hmm. to still serve in that way. I think that's, you're totally right. That opens up something so new and awesome. It, and it was, it it was interesting because it, because going off what you said, it was like, on one hand, it was challenging because, you know, when you, when you go there, you're, you're pulled from, you get a break from your life and you are pulled and immersed in mm -hmm. that. Whereas virtual, it's like, it would be an hour, couple hours of your time. And then the rest of your day for five days, you're still doing you're still working you're still doing your own life right. so it, it can be distracting too so mm -hmm. it takes a little more uh intentional self you know intentionality to be self-aware and to be disciplined um which i i was struggling with um the first few days i had to really i was like okay janae you gotta you, you've committed to this you gotta you gotta you sacrifice and there you go you have to you know sacrifice your needs and your time for this because it's it's not about you it's about right you know you know this goes back to our values here at the studio actually talking about because i i hadn't actually heard compassion th that way and I, it obviously Isn't makes cool? perfect sense yeah yeah so so uh we are passion love mastery those are our values here at the studio and, mm. and passion is to suffer mm -hmm. mm. that's that's where uh the passion of the christ comes from mm. so um i believe that if you can do anything, literally anything in the world, if you are sincerely passionate about it. And we'll know how deep your passion is depending on how much you're willing to sacrifice, how much you're willing to suffer. Mm. Are you willing to sacrifice sleep? Are you willing to sacrifice different things in your life 
for this, for whatever you think your goal is. And I can look at your life and I can look at your habits and I can go, you're not as passionate as you think you are. Mm. Mm. Then love being the center of every decision we make, Mm -hmm. just trying to go to love, even when you're dealing with your enemies or dealing with whoever, um, you know, a disgruntled client or, you know, how to prepare for class and just saying, okay, I want to, I want to start with love. And then mastery being the, the never ending pursuit of trying to get better Mm. is the idea there. Um, but I like this idea of compassion being so that that same idea of to suffer, but to suffer with somebody else, Mm -hmm. you know, to jump in when they're suffering and go, and and jump right in. I think, you know, that's like, I mean, the epitome of what I try to teach in in the corporate world and, and in improvisation, for instance, you know, if, if a scene's going bad, I'm like, you need to jump in. Like you have to be the one to be willing to sacrifice yourself Mm -hmm. for the betterment of the show and just, and just get in there and suffer right along with them. And eventually something good comes Mm -hmm. from it, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially that actually makes me think of, um, uh, a show I did in high school and it was my junior year in high school or no senior year. And we, it just, it was not, it was one of those nights. Everyone was just off. And then of course one person's off in the beginning and then it just that bad mojo affects everyone mm-hmm. else. And it was this big scene right after intermission and I was late and I, my, me and this other guy, we were, you know, the, we were like the more, we were like the main characters of that scene. And, uh, the, the other two were out there. He, so the, the guy that I was with, he was going out, he got out there. I was still running late. I don't remember why I was late. And so shame on me, bad actor, but, um, (laughs) I was late and I come out and I hear something about double decker buses. And this is like, this show is, so have you ever heard of a man who came to dinner? No. Okay. Um, (laughs) but, uh, it was, there's nothing about double decker buses, not even, <laughs> not even the right time zone, like nothing or time period, like nothing. And I'm like, what is going on? And I had to go out there and it was just like, we got on this tangent and you, you, you just had to suffer with each other. And it was painful. It was yeah. real painful. You could tell the whole audience was like, mm, something's not right here. <laughs> but yeah, you just, and it, we ended up lat we still like, it's, it's so funny every time I think about it. Cause we were dying hysterically after like, we're, we got in huge trouble, but we were like, yeah, it was, it was bad. <laughs> it, was, it, was bad. <laughs> it was bad. But you Not, suffer with them. Yeah, they're right, your, they're right. Your, they're your team. You and, are, and, you aren't anything without your fellow actors. Yeah. And I, and I like the idea of, uh, even that uh, along that story is one small thing adds up and adds up and adds mm-hmm. up. And if somebody starts showing up late, everyone starts showing up mm-hmm. late. And then if someone slacks off, everyone slacks off and, and if the leaders among the group are not doing that, not showing up, then everyone else is, is bound to follow suit. Mm-hmm. And then you can't turn around and get mad and be like, why didn't you know your lines? Yeah. Well, it's because I was following you. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So um, I would love to hear uh, one of your songs. Would oh, you boy. play a song for us? Sure. That would be so right. nice. I think I so and and I and I'll go back to our podcastathon while you kind of get set here. And um, if you could please smack Brian with the guitar, I could <laughs> yeah, we're all yeah, good. No, for I actually got a comment. Please some great, hit Brian great out. Footage. I don't know. <laughs> was that you, no, Joey? Okay. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> that's that's sorry, but I'm not going to do that. That's why I stepped out of the room actually, because you know. So you can make that just comment. a comment. Yeah. That's a good. I'll, idea. I'll be ready to adjust. This is perfect. Yeah, so you and you had jumped on our podcast-a-thon and sang a little song for us, which we appreciated. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. And uh, and I loved your advice that you gave to the the young singer on there, actually. And it Thanks. was it was just like you know, follow God, follow trust, um, do it. Um, and so so here you are. You've been singing your whole life, and um, something you love, you're passionate about, you're willing to suffer for. And now, now you've created an album. You're on your second album, and before you know it, that's all it takes. You start making albums, and then you're on your tenth album, twentieth album, right? And uh, and then you're you're a, a singer songwriter. I mean, that's how it is. So well, and then also, and I've I'm thankful for the my like I have a lot of incredibly talented um, friends that both on the acting side, music side. And, um, they, 
over the year, like I would get so caught up on, I have to be, I have to make it to this point or have, you know, and then mm-hmm. I'm very thankful. The, the friends that I have, they are so, their passion was so infectious because it was the point, you know, you don't do it for an end goal. You do it because if it's truly your passion, like they, I don't, you know, you hear it, it becomes redundant, but like, if it's truly your passion, you don't do it for anything, but just because simple simplicity of you love it. And, right. you know, and that kind of awoke me. I was like, whoa, do, well, do I really love this? And then, but then it was like, it was that reassurance I needed of like, yeah, it doesn't matter where you're not doing it for anything or for you just, you do it cause you love it. Cause ultimately you don't know where you're like, we were talking about earlier. You don't know where your life's going to go. You don't know when it's going to change or where it's going to take you or when your time is up. And so you don't, you just, if you do it for the sim- the simple fact that you love it and it's, and it feeds your soul. Uh, a friend of mine who's actually a very talented musician. I'm going to plug him, Rob Ricardo, look him up. Um, but he several years ago, um, said this quote about doing like his journey with where he found his niche and his sound. Um, he wasn't making music for a while for himself. He was making it for trying to please other people and trying to make it. And then he, he realized it wasn't feeding his soul. So he's like, you need to do things that feed your soul and you need to find that thing that feeds your soul and just follow that and, and dive into that. So, yeah. Great. So, uh, so before you begin, can you, can you set up this song a little bit and tell us, uh, kind of where, what it's about? I figured I would play Bloom. Um, okay. and, uh, I also haven't played this one in a while and I just think in this time of life of the world, um, it's about, like I said, it's just kind of embracing that wilderness and knowing that something beautiful is going to bloom out of it. There's a purpose. Um, and that we all are kind of interconnected to like our actions and our intentions and how we live our life, our daily life. And, um, every step is a step that will affect another person, either positively or negatively. And so just really living your life with an intentional or intentionality. Um, and I heard a cool quote, words make worlds. I heard a quote about that. Your Words. words make worlds. What you say will shape another person's world. Mm. I thought that was really, I just read that this morning and I was like, ooh, that's good. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Um, can you guys hear the guitar? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, it's a lot. Well, All we right, can, no, we can sacrifice Every Everybody everybody watching, you are in mm-hmm. for a treat. This is the first live musician we've had on Mornings with Matt. And yeah. she's gonna play Bloom. <laughs> After I get it. Do you want me to put my mic towards her guitar? Are we totally good? What? Should I put my mic towards her guitar? I think we're good if we need to. Yeah. If we need to. Actually, that would be kind of Usually, cool. usually the, um, so, so this is for any songwriters out there. Usually the instrument does come through louder. So you have to sing above the instrument. Oh, okay. Um, and, and you'll know like, like someone who's trying to hide their voice will play the instrument loud <laughs> and then kind of keep their voice. Well, vice versa. If you're trying to hide the instrument, <laughs> right. you, sing, you sing extra loud. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's why I don't grab an instrument. <laughs> Um, So this is Bloom. This is where you're gonna fall out. This is where you're gonna kick to the dirt. But you're not getting any weaker. No, baby, you're only as strong as you exert your energy into something you believe in give your soul some remedy give faith or open don't let go go don't you waste your wilderness baby this is where you're gonna bloom Bloom. don't you waste your wilderness baby have the willingness to lose and you'll bloom There's a chance, take it. If there's a chance, jump and then fall. Every battle, every scar, every brick blown through your heart. This life will twist. You won't know what's around the mess. But perfect. 
addicted in happiness So don't you waste your wilderness Baby, this is where you're gonna bloom Bloom Don't you waste your wilderness Baby, have the willingness to lose And you'll bloom This hurt is a lesson, this storm is a message Each broken bone a purpose etched in stone I swear it's worth it, your scars are my scars We're all part of a picture Your map is the road to a broken soul We're all cogs in the wheel of the world as it rolls And it rolls and it rolls Someone's gonna need your hope, so don't you waste your wilderness Baby, this is where you're gonna bloom Bloom Don't you waste your wilderness Baby, have the willingness to lose Oh, and you'll bloom Myself with my own capo in my face. <laughs> well, wow. thank you for sparing me. You're I appreciate it. <laughs> that was incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I can't believe you just come up with that humming around. <laughs> like, uh, well, it was inspired from definitely from the message, the wilderness, yeah. and then just gets your juices flowing. I mean, you guys are artists, you know. Yeah. No, no, the, the we are only, artists, yeah, and I've the, heard many songs, and that one belongs. <laughs> that one belongs in in the mainstream. That, that's oh, yeah. really, that's really, nice really beautiful, you. beautiful song. Thank it's you. like it hurts to not sing along to it. <laughs> so, yeah. so let me ask you this, because uh, I'm I'm uh, now a published author. I wrote my first book, right, and I'm on my second that. book now, and. It's interesting because in I, I never thought I'd be a writer necessarily. I always wanted to write a book, but then you know things kind of happened the way they did, and so so here I am. But but it, it's not uh, what I thought it would be, you know, mm -hmm. or like how do you, how do you go about it and whatnot. So I'm curious as a songwriter now in the world we're living in with Spotify and iTunes and everything, how do we support you? Because it's not like it's not like it used to be where we go buy a Sorry. record or a CD or something, right? <laughs> so is it is it about sharing? Is it about like like word of mouth? Uh, is there is there some way to monetarily support you? How to, if we wanted to say we want to hear more of this music out there, which I do by the way, because we do. Mm -hmm. um, how how do we how do we support? Um, well, yes, it's very very difficult nowadays. Um, uh, word of mouth, obviously. Um, posting though, so it's all. It's all virtual. It's all social media. Um, and someone was telling me just a couple weeks ago that like now Instagram has kind of changed their algorithm again. And it's really based off of who's clicking on your video and who's watching it, who's commenting and who's liking it and posting it. Like they have to literally post it for it to get that widespread for it to just spread to like people elsewhere um, and really just even pop up at the top of your feed or another person's feed. Um, so yeah, and for not just for me, but for any artist, you know, share if there's if someone posts content, meaningful content that um, speaks to you and just kind of hits you, share it. Don't be ashamed to share it. Don't think that person's gonna be like, wow, why did they share my stuff? They'll be like, dude, thank you. Um, so yeah, share it. And like same with you know with your mornings with Matt and like uh, with Deering and anything like if people are passionate or, or support it or believe in it, share it. Um, cause that'll go to the nth degree for, um, monetary don't even, I mean, that's not my right now. We're not there. Right. So, not, so is the album, is the album available? Like we can just no. listen to it. Oh, no. I well, My first one is, um, uh, my first one going to be all right. That's it's, what I meant. Yeah. Oh yeah. First one going to be all right is, um, out on Spotify, it's on iTunes. Uh, you can even look up on YouTube. Gonna be all right, Janae Dunn, and it'll be out there. They're full blown tracks. Like it's really, it's. I was very, very, very blessed and fortunate with that experience. Um, and for the, uh, I was able to afford it as well. And um, just, yeah, it wasn't. It, I was very, very blessed. Um, but 
yeah, and that one's very, I was still kind of trying to find my sound. Um, I also was kind of hiding away from part of myself, I think, when I wrote that. Um, but it all is still a part of me. Like, my music, some songs are very, like, Sarah Bareilles and very poetic and more ballad. And then other songs are very poppy and fun and catchy. Like, uh, Taylor Swift is obviously another, Taylor Swift, Sarah Bareilles, um, sometimes I say my music's like a swifted out Sarah Bareilles because I, I don't know. Um, but, and there's sometimes a little country vibe in there. Like it's just, I got a lot of blend of different things. Cause I also feel as an artist, one of the things I hate is I know hate's a strong word, but like it really gets me irked, gets under my skin. <laughs> is, um, when you tell an artist that they have to fit in a certain box or that they, if you are pop music or you are this, like if I want to make a country song, but then the next song on my album wants to be a little more like, I don't see, I don't see what's wrong with that. I right. feel like that only is going to broaden your listening, your listeners and, um, and you're being true to yourself. Like, unless you are just one, like whatever. But if you feel inclined to be kind of dabble in different waters, like do that. Um, I mean, that's the whole point of artistry and, being unique so and then and then what will happen probably is is just like anything else you may find an audience that really resonates with mm -hmm. one type of music that you play so mm -hmm. that may become what you're known for mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily like all you do or all you love or whatever yeah. but but you may lean into it for yeah. you know to sell some records and mm -hmm. it is what it is yeah. yeah yeah and um two side notes one i just dropped that in the um chat so definitely click on it go over to the um Thanks, spotify uh this cover is so cool i love it every time i see it i'm like this is so awesome my friend like in the air like we took a lot of took a lot of takes to get that shot <laughs> um, that's awesome but my friend she's a uh she's a great photographer and she travels her name's alex um or ali Saraki. um she's on instagram as alex ray but she's a phenomenal photographer and she did my photos we were that was in LA on Ventura like behind one of the buildings on Ventura Boulevard and then we also went to have you ever been to Malibu I don't think I have mm. there's some beautiful beaches mm. I've, yeah. I've heard yeah. the songs talk about it all the time By the way, <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Will Smith says it's great yeah. Yeah. I just I just, just kind of have to point this out here but Janae is like the queen of the shameless plug like She's plugged like three people on this yeah. show. Oh, yeah. I, I might be out. Yeah. We yeah. may have to change yeah. the button. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Straight, <laughs> up. Straight up. It's true. It's I'm, am I allowed to plug people? Oh, 100%. yeah. No, no. It's no, part I'm, of the show. I'm, There's I'm, this piece I'm, where, <laughs> where it goes, Brian Sweeney, shameless plug. Shameless plug. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So that's, there yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's giving you a compliment. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I promise that was a, okay. that was a compliment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the viewers know it. The viewers know it. And the other thing I was going to say is it's kind of cool because this is just, you know, God's come up a lot in this. And um, the part of the podcast-a-thon, again, was just we were coming up with certain things, and um, Karina was going to come on the show. Um, and I was just, like, thinking through, and automatically, and that's typically when I think singing, just pop. You pop right in my head. I told Joe, you. I'm, like, your biggest fan on that stuff. Like, um, And so she was so excited, and then she, she messaged me afterwards also, um, and then I had reposted the song you put up yesterday because you put up the Which, song that you, you sang. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Of course, of course. Um, and then I did it, and it wasn't working, and so I reposted it, right? And the tags weren't in it, right? Oh. They said they were, but you know when you paste it back in, but you don't double click it again, mm -hmm. they don't they don't resonate. So it didn't go into her message board, right? So then she said she messages me back, and she's like, "Hey, I can't repost this. I really want to repost it." Right. Which is so cool because the, the whole point going all the way back is we go into serve and going to help each other. Well, she has twenty six thousand followers. Yeah. That's and she's 14. Yeah. Yeah. And it's awesome. But that's that idea. Right. So you weren't doing it with any other intention other than to go to serve. Right. Mm -hmm. And then somebody takes that and then goes out and reposts and who knows what comes from that. And so I guess go, going back to viewers and what they can be doing, the repost is a huge part of that. Um, and and just when you go out and serve it just opens up the the door for that to happen 10 times more and you think about joey talking about your shameless plug there have been multiple times where you plugged people today right well you're serving them and then they'll serve you and it's like this thing that goes round and round and round right mm -hmm. um cool yeah that's a good point thank you for sharing that you're welcome and also because also 
Never mind. I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, yeah, I feel that. Feel so that so before we level. get to where jo- Joey, Joey's going to do something for me. I was just going to play this <laughs> thing in, into the microphone here, but Joey's going to, he's going to make it more. He's going to next level it. Cool. Um, so before we get there, do you have any uh, rapid fire questions for us? Yes, I do for you. Okay. Um, Cause I, I, I stayed on and watched um, majority of the, your guys's show on Saturday after I got off and you were talking about your book. And so you said, you mentioned that you, you were writing that this current book before the one that you did release. Mm -hmm. And so my question was just what, like, was that intent? Like I, 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 well, I remember you said it it wasn't intentional. It just kind of happened, but like, why like i don't know what was your reason for kind of did it just something just not feel right or were you um what was what was for the weight and why like i don't know so the book i'm working on now is um is is sort of it's uh, i'm in the process of of becoming as i write it Mm. and so it's called the best listener in the room and it's Mm -hmm. all about listening it's listening to spirit listening to uh god to each other to body language, to uh, intention, listening to words, listening to tonality, um, physicality, listening to smell. I mean, it's just like it's this. It's a really deep subject, mm-hmm. and um, and so I'm I'm kind of wrestling through that. And I and I wrote the whole book actually, and I finished it before I started the next one. But I, I finished the book, and then because I hadn't written before, when I went back to chapter one, it was like oh. It was so bad compared to where I was mm. at chapter 10 because I, I, I kind of learned how to write through the process of doing it. Mm-hmm. And that book, I was inspired to write, uh, I really believe, through the Holy Spirit. So um, so I'm, I, I feel called, like I have to write that one. And, and it became a part of my habit. I would wake up at four in the morning, I would come in, I would write the book. And then, you know, and it was just a process of writing. That's all I was doing. Mm. I it wasn't trying to even necessarily finish anything. Um, and then what happened was when that sort of start over point happened, editing was much more difficult than I realized it was going to be. And as I started to to start over, it just felt like this, like really difficult thing. Like I was out of my element and I was out of my element. So, um, so that's when I, instead of stopping my habit, I decided to, um, I I was writing a, a blog for the studio and that was where the, um, the seven strategies to market and make money as an actor came that that was the name of a blog I was going to write. And then all of a sudden it was like, huh, like this is uh like, this is flowing. So I just kept writing every day. I just kept writing this blog just became longer. And then I was like, Oh, I'm going to break this into seven chapters, see what happens there. And then next thing you know, it was like, it, then it was a book. Yeah. So, so that book came off of a writer's block on the other book and there's just the idea of not stopping the habit of writing is how that happened and Mm -hmm. then when I finished that one that's when I got smart and hired an editor and so she got hired on to edit both books then and so we started on this other one because it was it was sort of an easier topic to get through and then she gave me this mountain of notes for the first book so so but so I did have to start over in in a sense Mm -hmm. But now with, with knowing what I know and understanding a, a certain writing format that, that it's going to hit this particular audience, which is That's self-development cool. and business uh, mastery and, and, and life mastery. So there, like, there's, a, there's a few audiences in there that are going to really um, resonate with it. Where this other one is like, this is, this is acting and it's for actors. And, um, and so there's a, there's a lot of life lessons in the, in the other book too, the one I've it's already published, but, but it's acting is my day job. That's, mm-hmm. that's the title. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's on your. It's shelf. all over the yeah, it's, it's all over the shelf, shelf there. there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, I I think I think that's awesome. Um, I you're, I thought it was really inspiring, and actually, what you just said, it, um, I can relate to that because that's kind of I guess that's kind of what I was trying to explain. I'm not always the best at explaining. Um, being a writer, I actually speaking, I don't always explain the best. Um, but I would agree. I feel like this. I had plans to like release more stuff a lot sooner because I really I haven't released anything in over a year and I still don't I still am not ready so it's gonna be probably like sometime in 21 if not maybe 22 where something will really come out but I I would agree because I kind of feel like I've I've been co-writing with people and um learn and they're 
phenomenal writers and I'm like wow I'm not I'm not right these these songs like you said where you went back to your first chapter like this is this isn't good and I'm yeah. like <laughs> I'm looking at some of my songs I'm like oh this isn't good like let's work on this but it's but that's that's um kudos to you to be able to like it goes back to your your thing about mastery and like always you're always in the process of learning you're never you're never done learning and you and you're never gonna you you're only as a what's it it's a quote you're only as successful as your willingness to learn or something like that yeah so good for you to like take that time I thought that was really inspiring so thank you for sharing that absolutely I needed that so and I and I also think you're only going to be as successful as your habits Mm, mm -hmm. so so it, it this is what do you do every day what do you do on your day off what do you do I mean are you the same person when the lights are off as when they're on Mm. and and when you go home what's your mindset you know I mean these guys will tell you when I leave here I I have told myself that I go to work because when I go home to my family it's very important to me Mm -hmm. and and I I play with my kids but I consider it to be work in that I'm not allowed to be tired Mm. Um, I'm uh, you know like 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 I can rest of course but but I'm not allowed to give all my energy someplace else and not save anything for them that's you know, yeah. so it's this idea of like resetting my mind, turning other things off, making them most important. And, you know, whether it be five minutes or an entire Sunday or whatever, whatever it ends up being, it's like, if I'm in with you, you get all of me. I love that. You know, and if we're in the podcast, you get all of me during this moment. And, 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 uh, you know, these guys know I get all, I get pretty passionate. I get fired up when things don't go right because I do care. Like mm-hmm. I care so much, you know, I wanted today to be really great. I wanted, you know, our interview to be awesome. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so I'm like, you know, I'm running around like a madman because truthfully, like you matter and you matter to me as much as, as if you were, you know, already famous and had tons of, you know, followers. I mean, really, there's no yeah, difference in my mind, yep. like zero. Yep. And so, um, so the, so the love is there. And I think that's the idea behind the passion, the suffering, the, the daily grind of something. It's like, do you believe it or do you not believe it? And are you doing it for the right reason? Is your why correct? Yep. Cause then the how really doesn't matter. Which is, that's, that's what we teach in the coaching. Uh, my job is like getting to the heart of your why. Like I told my boss the other day, she's, she's brilliant and, um, all about breaking those habits. And I've been faced with a lot of not so good habits this past year and learning how to, you know, you got to, like you said, you got to, your habits are only, or your success is only as good as your habits. And, um, but yeah, getting to the center of your why and your mission with, and I like that you said, are you the same person when the, you know, when you're, you know, away or whatever, what did you say when you turn the lights off? When the lights are off. off? Um, cause that also goes down to, do you like yourself? You know, are you, are you being true to yourself? And if not, then maybe there's something there. Like if, are you afraid of something about yourself or ashamed of something? And if so, unpack that and then, and get to, cause that'll only help you grow as well. Because if you're, if there's something holding you back and you're not the same person, then you need to ask yourself why. And yeah. I think asking yourself why and continuing to ask that why will lead you to your why. Totally. It's like if you were, if you were success coaching, right. And then you were, demonstrating with the lights on Mm -hmm. publicly this is how you set goals and this is what you do this and here's how you whatever frame Mm -hmm. your day but then you go home and you don't do what you're preaching yeah right that's the idea of like you're living this false reality and and you're trying to be something you're not instead of i and i believe this like the first thing i said today was hey we weren't clean this morning we weren't prepped for you and we got prepped like Mm -hmm. i don't mind saying it because it's true Mm -hmm. like live in the truth and then as long as you can grow from it it's all good exactly but don't try to pretend to be something you're not exactly own your mistakes and own your your faults and that actually too i think people admire that a little more it may make them a little annoyed or whatever which it didn't make me annoyed at all (laughs) but i'm saying like i'm i know from personal experience where i've taken that step to like own up to something I did wrong and you can tell how it affected them. And then you're like, oh. but over time, you know, they, after they have a chance to kind of marinate in that, they appreciate it because you're ultimately, you're being honest and you're in that moment, you're thinking about them and not yourself. And you're saying, Hey, I screwed up, but you know, right. I'm going to make this right. And, and, and how much worse, let's just say that somebody got upset about <clears throat> something. How much worse is it going to be 
if they find out later mm-hmm. that you lied and covered something up. Yep. I mean, that, exactly. that could just ruin a relationship right yep. there completely. Exactly. Okay, cool. so is this going to play, Joey? Yeah. You think so? Mm-hmm. Is this playing from r- directly from the iPad? Should, what, what do I need to turn up? Anything? No, I turned it up. Already. Okay, okay, cool. So, so my daughter. I was going to say, are these your kids? Okay. Uh, it's so funny. Happy she, uh, we were talking about, remember we were talking about happy birthday? Uh-huh. Okay, so she's been singing. This is her at two years old, actually. And she's been singing. She she writes songs all. She wrote me a song last night. She wrote Aww. this song, and 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 when I say write, she improvises. You know, like she just kind of makes it up as she goes along, mm-hmm. and just just sings Good songs. Time. And I'm I'm trying to remember what last night's was all about. Um, she she sings so many, like it's crazy. But uh, but this was her at two years old singing Happy Birthday, and I go back to that idea of you know being able to sing Happy Birthday freely. And here's my daughter trying to love me on my birthday. Can we cut to that, Joey? Yep. Oh, did it not play? No. It just zoomed out. Yep. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. (laughs) (laughs) hey she's got great pitch and she's only two well she's two there she's six now and she still has great pitch yeah she's only two yeah but but she was all here's the thing like it did it come natural not necessarily she's been singing Mm -hmm. And loving it and doing it and the same thing with her like her artwork mm-hmm. we had a um allison pin on the show she's a makeup artist yes i was looking oh man have you seen some of her the work where she was she like, draws hey, herself yeah yeah oh that was fascinating. so that's so, so cool. my i told her about my daughter and she and she was like oh my gosh i would i would love it if uh she drew me a picture so my daughter's drawing inside of one of my books and i'm gonna send it to her um, and then she, she made this video that was like, I really think you're talented and it's just my opinion. <laughs> and <laughs> I also thought it was hilarious. But, but last night, speaking of last night, my, I, I catch my daughter in the mirror and she's drawn a mustache on herself uh-huh. and she's like, she's completely trying to now draw a character on herself and turn her into something else. That's <laughs> hilarious. That's hilarious. Awesome. But, but anyway, long story short, I, I brought this up because this is the impact that we can have on people. And, mm-hmm. and you had this impact, like Brian said, on somebody very specifically, but so many more people now. And your voice is already being heard and you're already making an impact, even if it's one person at a time. Mm-hmm. And it's only, it's only a matter of time before that catches wind and just flies off. So yeah. we're very excited for where you're heading. You, yeah, you, you guys too. Um, yeah. I think I think it's so cool and what a what a cool way to take control of like like we were talking about earlier what can I do with the circumstances you know what 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 are my abilities and what can I do right now with COVID and you guys have been doing your talk shows and all this stuff and still thriving as a studio which is really cool so awesome thank you thank you very much all right so that is our show today everyone thank you so much for tuning in please do not forget to like subscribe comment and share the channel Uh, Help us spread this light-driven content to the planet. Thank you and God bless. Thanks for listening to Mornings with Matt. Please like, subscribe, and follow us at Deering Acting Studio to keep up with the latest content. For more information on classes, private lessons, or professional development coaching, visit www.deeringstudio.com. Have a Deering day, everyone.